and now it's time for Martin Scorsese's romantic films. So just like with the war genre, the romance, and even the rom-com and just that type of genre is just not for me. I don't really want to watch a movie about two people loving each other or saying how much they love each other or whatnot. That's just not for me, nor am I interested in it. But this first movie, Boxcar Bertha, it's more of a, I guess, thriller? The romantic part feels just kind of there. Movies about a bunch of criminals going around wherever they're at. A lot of train tracks, but they're, you know, criminals, even though one of them, Bill, is like, no, I'm not a criminal. You're wanted around this area. The cops are after them. They're over here robbing people on money and jewelry. You guys are definitely criminals. And that's the whole movie. You're watching a movie about four criminals. And then I guess kind of being portrayed as human as well, despite doing these bad things because they just want to. Bill or even most of them, they don't like the way that things are. And they're like, you know what? We're going to do whatever we want. I was confused by Bertha's motive. In the very beginning of the film, her father dies. A bunch of like men show up. They beat each other up. And then it goes with a title card or title screen of Boxcar Bertha. And I thought that was going to be a motive for Bertha. But no, it seems like they just abandoned that. That's the one thing I'm like, wait a minute, where's that at? But whatever, it changes courses to her just out on the road, being free, trying to find some sort of father figure or whatever, right? And then that's when she meets Bill and the other crew. And at first, I thought she was making very bad decisions. But turns out she actually really likes this and falls in love with Bill. But I was expecting her to be this very nice girl because she looks like a nice girl. But she really is. Well, I guess she is, but she just likes to thrive of, I guess, running away and not wanting to play by the rules. And then there's one point where they all get split up because the cops found them. This lady finds her and takes her under her wing, gives her a house, a roof to live on, free sex or whatever, all that stuff. And she decides to leave from that because she loves Bill and she just likes being outside more. That moment I saw as her choosing to go back, not looking into the future. She wants to go back to the old, normal way that she already liked it with Bill and the harmonica guy and guy in that suit or whatever. Forgot their names, but she had a chance and an opportunity to choose a better life. So by the end, she is an interesting character. She is someone who you think she's like in danger because she's going in this like one group she's playing dice and like she wins all this money i just find it interesting that she had another choice bill is her lover and i don't see why she loves him i don't know he's just kind of this homeless crook and criminal and doesn't want to be a criminal but he is a criminal when i first saw him probably using her that was my first thought and i don't know if this is just me but whenever i go back to watch an older film in the 50s 60s and 70s for some reason the couple the guy is usually older in his late 30s early 40s and the girl looks really young i don't know the certain age if they are around the same age sure that's fine but i don't know man there are some movies where it gets real just like are you like old enough like the roger moore bond movies some of his movies the bond girl looks way too young and it looks really uncomfortable it feels super uncomfortable to watch again i don't know the age but just based off of looks and i'm totally you know judging here but she looks a bit too young there but despite that they fall in love because i forgot this is a romantic film and doesn't do a good job at that even though it is a romantic film most of it is bertha bill and their team on the run by the law going to place to place stealing jewelry shit happens they have to split up they come back and tragedy hits and then there's a sprinkle of oh yeah let's have a sex scene here and there it's like oh this is you know a romantic film i forgot and then after coming together the police find them they hang bill on the side of the train but then harmonica black guy shows up and when he kills these people they start flying like they fly like a good feels like four feet five feet i don't know the exact measurements but they like flew and got shot at the same time and then the movie ends tragically i guess if you want to look at it that way of Bertha seeing Bill being driven away by the train while he's being hanged to end off the film. And the ending does end in a kind of abrupt way, which I guess was the whole point of it. It just kind of ends. I didn't really expect it, honestly. And then also, supposedly, it's based on a true story, which I don't know how much I believe. If there is a movie and this is based on true story, I don't know. It's like maybe 50% true and the other 50 is like fiction. So Boxcar Bertha, it's a good movie. It's a movie I enjoy. I'm glad most of it is a kind of running away from the law movie with, you know, hints and sprinkles of romance in there but not really at the same time at least i didn't feel that at all because i completely forgot it halfway through i was like oh yeah so i didn't expect to like it at all just based off the fact that it's a romance film but in the end i liked it come to me the age of innocence and then Age of Innocence. So here's the thing about this movie. This is not a movie for me whatsoever because I thought it was boring. Even though it has themes of sacrifice and arranged marriages and whatnot, not for me at all whatsoever. Barely wrote any notes. I wrote like five things, I think. Yeah, I think five or six. I do like that this movie is an homage or just kind of commemorating Gorsese's father. At the end, I did not expect a memory of Gorsese. I forgot his father's name, but I did like that. It was a nice touch to end off on, but I don't know. Not really for me. I don't even know 
know how I'm gonna talk about this film. It is a love affair between Michelle Pfeiffer and then this one guy. Don't know his name. I can't tell you. I forgot. But there is an arranged marriage and he likes this lady that he's gonna get married to but he has his eyes set on Michelle Pfeiffer and vice versa as well. Michelle Pfeiffer has eyes on him. I fucking each other and whatnot. And this eventually leads into this whole love affair. And so there's like certain points where you know they're kissing and whatnot here and there. But the one thing I do remember and like about this is that he has to essentially sacrifice Michelle Pfeiffer over this other girl. It's not like he doesn't like this other girl. Like for some reason loves Michelle Pfeiffer and by the end he has to sacrifice that in order to have a happier life have kids by the end because he just has to it's the times that's also another thing why is this set in this time period because I'm not interested in the whole wigs and big dresses and the theater auditorium whatever that is I'm not interested in that that was one thing as well but sacrifice the theme of it by the end I really like that part having to sacrifice his love for Michelle Pfeiffer in order to live a happy life and have kids really grow old and so getting to the end because I just forgot a majority of the movie he has a son now who's I think about to get married he arranged a meeting for him and Michelle Pfeiffer but he's like nah I'll just stay out here and sit look at the window and it's glare and just kind of you know things about his life Michelle Pfeiffer his wife that died of a lung cancer I think or something like that either way she's not there and he just kind of walks off to end off the movie so in the end he didn't make a bad decision but it's not the choice that he wanted and that was kind of stripped away from him because he was in an arranged marriage he had to go through this marriage or else I don't know something would happen there would be chaos there would be questions from both parents being like do you not like my daughter and all that stuff so themes and what this movie is trying to go for I like it's just at the end of the day it's a romantic film and it's just like a lot of like I think there's one moment where both Michelle Fiverr and the main guy they're just kind of holding each other like I don't know for what reason there's just like sexual tension that's also a big thing all right that's it and so because it is an affair it's very taboo so I guess if you're into affairs and very taboo things then I guess this is the movie for you but for me personally that's all I really had to say about it movies really not for me the movie's not bad it wasn't like I was rolling around and being like my god please end I wasn't like that at all it was more like damn this is not this is not working for me at all and then the second thought was what am I gonna say for the video because I don't really have much to say about it sacrifice in order to have a happy life have kids have a family why not and by the end our main guy he maybe regrets it but it wasn't a bad choice at all it just wasn't what he wanted and he was kind of forced to in a way to be in his marriage because it was arranged so in the end the age of innocence is a well-made movie but for me personally it's not a movie for me and then that is it for Scorsese's romantic films. I guess it went in a way that I kind of expected it for me not to really like the films or love the films. I was not expecting to like Boxcar. Age of Innocence, once it started, the time period that it was set in, and this whole love affair thing, it was like, oh no, this is just not for me. It's gonna be really boring for me, and it was. Again, not bad films. Both of these movies are still well made. Age of Innocence is a bit more because Boxcar feels like a, almost feels amateur-esque in a way. Very student film, very low budget obviously low budget but not bad films at all so that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching